Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and back for another episode. I am excited uh, because today I have an amazing guest to join um, and so I'm trying to think, I was asking her earlier, trying to remember when or how I met her, but Amira Garba is my, my guest today. Um, and so, so many great things come to mind from back at Temple. So Temple, they'll say this is a Temple made episode, um, but she is an amazing woman that I have always looked up to. She is doing so many wonderful things. She's a mom, family woman, careerpreneur, um, and the owner founder, creator, and owner of Lovely Wine. So Amira, welcome. Thank you, Tavia. <laughs> don't be having to get my feelings today either, okay? <laughs> don't be starting because I'm already like, I don't want to cry today. <laughs> but that was a great intro. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. Thank you for, for taking some time to join us. I know life is always <laughs> busy, always hectic. So um, <laughs> I'm so... This is something I've been thinking about probably for too long to say out loud, um, but finally reached out and was like, hey, would you be willing to? Um, but before I forget, um, for those who have been listening or if this is your first time, one of the things that I do to start each episode is uh, like something I like to call a gratitude moment. Um, and so just taking some time to think and share something or someone that I'm grateful for. And so with you being my guest, I'll let you go first. So if you would just share something, someone that you're grateful for. Oh, I just go with today. I am grateful for the Lord's grace and his blessings, child, because every time <laughs> I think I'm going to have, not that I think I'm going to have a bad day, I'm just feeling off. He, something happens or he does something or he sends someone my way to just remind me that I am um, cared for, I am not forgotten, I am loved, and um, all will always work together for the good. So today was one of those days when I was just like, I see you, Lord, I feel you, I get it, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Amen to that, and Amen. I completely understand and feel you, um, and I feel like I've had a lot of those days this last year. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say that I would that has been something like you said, just kind of literally this morning was like, okay, God, I thank you for your grace. Cause the little mm -hmm. things that I find myself that I start to take for granted, it's just like, mm, not so much. But um aside from having, you know, getting to see you and have this conversation um today, I'm grateful for for my parents. Um like, you know, always grateful for them, but just I have been spending some extended time with them recently. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, okay, I'm happy that I get to that because of the pandemic and working from home, it has afforded me the opportunity to kind of spend some extended time with them that normally I wouldn't, it'd be, you know, every few months or so. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for them and the fact that I still have them here and they're healthy and we can talk and laugh and they can give me input and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And yes, shout out to the parents. Yes, Felix and Violet. They are there. It's my special two, as I call them. Um, but <laughs> but um, like I said, I've been thinking about this um, mm -hmm. for a little while. And as I mentioned, I will say in terms of how I met you, I can't really remember. I just remember, like I said, for as long as I can remember in terms of from being at Temple, it was knowing mm -hmm. you, you were always, have always been someone who just gets it done, like says, oh, hey, I think it could be done a little, you know, I think that what about this? And then makes it happen mm -hmm. from the modeling troupe, because, you know, there was a modeling troupe that it was like, hmm, this is cool, but we can make it better. Um, so Dynasty. <laughs> like that oh, whole like that was my I want to say dynasty was one I, I did not model <laughs> still don't I leave that to you all but that was like my first opportunity in terms of being an event coordinator and so yes. getting to experience oh, these things um and but then I leaned on you quite a bit so <laughs> <laughs> but no it was fun it was like I said it was a great learning experience and also just being able to get out and see other schools and other you know traveling a little bit as we did um and then 
working at the edge together. <laughs> The that was experience, experiential location for college students to really get a firsthand experience on the real world of real estate swindles. Like how I said that. <laughs> yes, that was wonderful. That you are the pro. You are the you are the marketing executive professional. Listen, you are. So, oh, it but... was a great experience that we learned so much. We had too much fun. It was the first job. I had where my boss was just like recruited me from my personality. I had no experience being an RA. I was working in at the front desk mm -hmm. in the student center up until then. And shout out to um, Brandon, um, who walked in one day, was like, I need to fill this building up. We got a new brand new state of the art building coming to campus. I like your personality. I want you to help me lease it. And he's the first person who really taught me how to see me and showed me how I showed up in the world, which was great energy, great personality and always be myself and hired me like on the spot. And then I had to interview other people and hired my team. Next thing you know, we was selling these little bitty rooms to you, <laughs> people like you and your friends to say you should live in this new brand new building. And everyone got there was just like, what was the rest mm -hmm. of the space? But we had fun. We it had was fun. fun. It yeah. was a lot of fun and it was one of my first or second jobs um, on campus. So when I was in school, the industrial chic look. <laughs> um, it was a great, great, great experience. I'm, yeah. I'm so grateful for the people I met at that job, including all the residents and the RAs. And like I guess that branding will always be a part of my story. Um, as a career woman. So yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so a lot of great memories, but um you said that was kind of beginning of the experience, but just for me, like I said, always seeing what you were doing and always kind of being a step ahead or just in the know, just very professional, just very about it. So if you would just share a little bit about your experience um, as a careerpreneur. <laughs> yeah, this term. I'm yeah. pretty sure I made it up and should copyright it. I don't think anyone else did. We can, we can talk about that. You. I that's really the, think I should. That's yes, attorney, attorney Latavia. Yes, like, like let's make sure you know. I'll... I know. But uh, my journey. So yeah, I started working straight out of college. So I graduated in May of 2007 from Temple and was working by July as a marketing. Nope, I was in buying at Macy's in New York. I did that for two years and then went into the marketing um, department as an executive there for. 11 years, <laughs> a very, very long time. In that time, I got married, bought a house, had kids. And homegirl was just like, at 30, I was just like, what happened with my life? <laughs> like, why is it so unfulfilling at this point, right? And I wasn't, it wasn't a mirror. If I, now knowing, going on this journey of discovery of who I am, mm -hmm. um, I was just like that whole lifestyle was not me and don't get me wrong my kids are the best part that came <laughs> out of it oh my god I can talk about those girls all day uh, but I was just like checking off boxes up until that point boxes that I never even dreamed I would be checking off I was supposed to be living in a high rise somewhere in New York traveling every other month and when I realized I wasn't living my best life in a way that brought me joy, joy outside of my job, my family, like just for you, because you're a whole human first, right? And I wasn't like sad or anything, but I just was like, like, you know me, right? I'm just right. this full of energy, but it wasn't mm -hmm. going anywhere. It wasn't <laughs> going anywhere. I was exhausted. I just felt really robotic. And I was like, at my core, that's just not who Amira is. So I needed to find out who I was as this adult, right? Mm -hmm. And so I read the book, The Alchemist, and it changed my life. And I will always give credit to that book. I've said it in every interview, just because it simplified my journey towards finding my purpose, which was to stop overthinking. I am an overthinker, worry ward, like that's me. Um, actually, I'm not gonna claim that because me and, me and my Lord are working. Hey, <laughs> not worrying. <right> now. <laughs> So I'm a, re a, reformed, therapy, a recovering overthinker is like how I like to put overthink. it. But up until that point, that's what I was. And this book was just like, stop overthinking and follow the signs. What do you like to do? 
And I was trying to remember, like, as a child, what did I dream about being? And because I lost sight of that, too. And I always wanted to just be a boss. <laughs> I really just wanted to be a boss, have my own company, be in charge. Might have control issues, you know, just a little bit. But, um, but that's what, and I was not living in that. Where was my business that I said I always wanted to start, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's like, I'm going to do it. So it's like, well, what do you like to do, Amira? Amira likes to drink. Okay. And I like to have a good time when I drink and I like to learn about what I'm drinking and I like to have discussions about what I'm drinking. And then now it turns into, I'm going to wine tastings and I'm reading books about wine and I'm trying new wines every week. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> If I don't overthink and I follow the signs, Lord, I think I should start my own wine line. I don't know a winemaker that looks like me, speaks like me from where I'm from. Ooh, that's a Maryland when I could come in and start <laughs> something that may be super challenging and then figure it out. That, that gets me going. That is like, I'm on that. So now I know a ton of black winemakers, women winemakers is not enough compared to the industry. Right. But just to say, like, I'm not the first or anything, but that was kind of the motivation to be like, wait, I don't see me. So, oh, I want to get into this industry and I already had an interest in it. So why can't I make a business out of it? So everything that I had wanted to do started to make sense because the pieces fit together, right? Mm -hmm. And I just didn't overthink it. And I jumped right out the window and was like, I'm starting it. And I know that sounds easy, <laughs> but it was hard. But I literally knew I had to jump out the window or I would have talked myself out of doing it. So it's been fun ever since. No, that that's amazing. And as you were talking, I was like, no, that sounds like I remember when I don't remember who, like, but when I found out that like, oh, she created a wine. And I'm like, wait, how do you do that? But okay, <laughs> like it was just wait, how how wait, I thought, okay, no, but it was knowing that it was you, it was like it makes sense. <laughs> like I I would never have even you know it's like oh but and then the way that you not only oh I want to get into it but then the personal touch of mm -hmm. just it's it's not just another wine it's not this even the names and then you know the descriptions and how you do I it put my heart into it girl <laughs> it's like I can tell so it's it's like I said it just it made sense like oh hmm that's wouldn't have never thought of that, but when I saw that it was you, you were doing it and how you were doing it, mm -hmm. I, was, I just remember like, dang, I wish I, I wish I lived closer so I could do more. <laughs> Cause I was in North Carolina <laughs> at the time. I was like, no, I want to go, I want to be a part, but, but I, I admired from a distance is what no I was. No worry. Saying. You can always come join the team. I'm a one woman show so we can figure it out, girl. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah. a girl always need great counsel now. We could talk about that. What type of law do you do? Like, I don't think I knew. No. It is. Because um, I think yeah. in the beginning, it was like business. But I don't know if it's yeah. changed. It's changed. So initially, I was doing like business real estate um, for a firm. And then I've done employment higher ed. But my primary focus now is, I would say, around legacy building or, you know, building and maintaining the legacy. So still business law in terms of creating, having conversations, creating your business of what you want it to be, how you want it to be structured, uh, the intellectual property of the business, primarily trademarks and copyrights, because patents, that's, that's, that's way out my lane. But I have people I can refer you to for the patents. Um, and then estate planning is, is another aspect that I have added. So those are the three primary areas that I would say are my focus. Um, I still as needed, do some of the other things related to real estate or um, employment law. I still do employment investigations. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's primarily what I'm doing. So that's, and that's why I say I, I've, as you mentioned, you know, thinking about when you were younger of what you wanted to do. I initially, the first memory I have is I wanted to be Madam CJ Walker. Um, but, and I used to think it was because I wanted to do hair. Yeah. And I've always kind of dabbled, but the older I got, I realized, no, I don't actually want to do hair, but I want to run my business. I want to mm -hmm. create opportunities for other people. And so mm -hmm. that is what draws me to Amazing. business. And so it's just like, how can I take my, you know, where I check the boxes uh -huh. <laughs> for myself, yeah. how can I now take that and use it to help other people? Yeah. And so, 
even with doing the podcast, is like, I want to feature, I want to highlight business owners and ones mm-hmm. that are doing it and doing it well, especially black owned and women owned. Yeah. Um, said it's, it is refreshing and it's encouraging to hear um, yeah. that, especially even like you said, you had done every, you know, so sort of, quote unquote, done everything that you felt like, oh, I'm, so, I'm living this life. I'm supposed to do that's what I thought I was doing what I was supposed to do but that yeah. word don't work around here no more girl that is that is a whole word right there of this because I would say similar in the sense of oh wait I did everything I was supposed to do so why don't I feel like I thought I was supposed to feel or have the thing what Tavia needed to do for Tavia's best self exactly. and that's what we got to search for and society's expectations false expectations will just drive you mad and I was just like "Mm -mm, I'm not gonna go mad because I got kids and they watching me so we gonna flip this and do what our heart desires and that's always anything I do if there's no joy in it I'm not doing it it has to be that is beautiful and it's like it's one of those things like it sounds great but it's also actually it's not just a saying It's it's not it's really not everything like when I mentor or someone needs an encouraging word or anything like and I always say like I know it's cliche but it's really real like when you make the choice to live your best life go after your passions do things for you take on self-care and you realize it's it's not that it's hard it's just a new habit then you create your world that works and serves you versus you trying to work and serve the world so, definitely <laughs> you know it's and it's as you're talking I'm like kind of remembering like wait when that kind of so-called switch was flipped um mm-hmm. for me because it's I've it's always so I'll, you, you knew me then I've yeah. always been the one I'm gonna I gotta do this the way I was told or I can't do this or if they said and it's like mm, but I'm the one that's always frustrated or like nobody's happy I'm everybody else is good but I'm not so hold up something's got to give and realizing like you said just okay I went to school I went back to school I went to school again and the stuff that I want to do or that where I get joy from is not happening (laughs) in this this day to day see I give it to you people who stay in school that's one thing I knew wasn't my life (laughs) I'm not, I'm not, I did my four, I did my time. I graduated with honors, but no, I'm not paying you to learn again. I'm not, I want, I I learn by experience. That just has always been me. I could read it a million times, but I have to do it, see it, touch it to get it. So that's just me. But I'm always like people who just be in school for 20 years, like y'all, y'all are different breed and God bless. I just can't. I don't I yeah. I don't blame yeah. you because at this point because no. like in my family there was this thing like because my dad has is forever in school he's working on his doctorate now and it was like we were I graduated from high school he graduated then it was college I, and so it was like almost this like unofficial thing and I was like you know what you got it I'm mm-hmm. done I'm mm-hmm. done not trying to compete with your dad no more, no right? more. you got you it like I am not paying to go back to school. I love learning. So it's Mm -hmm. like my next thing that I want to do is I would love to, I saw you went to Costa Rica. So I got questions, but I want to go, I've been looking at a a Spanish immersion program that they have in Costa Rica. So I was just like, I want to do that. So that is, that was my plan for 2020, but you know, the good old pandemic. The pandemic messed with that because they were like yeah we're opening back up but we're we're not we haven't been cleared to let americans in yet <laughs> oh no girl i was in december they've been they let girl go yeah so oh, that is a beautiful like that is a goal being transition to this year um but yeah i love that like i said just and it's it's interesting to hear you say it because like i said outside looking in i always thought oh no yeah amira is living her best life because it looked like you were doing that to me um but it was like you said, it was, I guess at some point maybe got stifled or like, let me pivot because this yeah. is what, this is who I am and this is what I want to do, but let me make sure, I don't know, almost like you said, fit it into this, the mold of this new life or this new world yeah. that I'm in. Yeah. And I love that you, you know, you did not say, you know, we're like, hold up. 
something's not right I can't keep doing this Mm -hmm. um but what I love in terms of hearing you say it and even just like I said watching from a distance is you are creating Mm -hmm. the space for you to be your full self Mm -hmm. and your daughters to see you as your full Mm -hmm. self and see that hey you can do this and we can have it you know that quote unquote have it all absolutely Um, so I was like, because when I was like, wait, they're gone for how long? They're in coast. I'm like, this is wonderful. And I'm like, they're so well traveled. And I think it's beautiful. <laughs> they and like, they the have problem. businesses. <laughs> they have problem. I'm like, then they want to go everywhere that I go. I've traveled <laughs> a bit. And I'm like, you just spent almost a month in Costa Rica. Leave me alone. You don't pay no bills. You don't work no job. Y'all got to relax. I mean, <laughs> my kids relax now. <laughs> but they're yeah. awesome they're awesome but that was that trip was a part of that I get to do what I want to do who says I can't go to Costa Rica for a month like who said that and that that's the journey I'm on all these things that I thought I knew these these um false beliefs that I had mm-hmm. or the fears and the anxieties and the worries I don't know who she was that's not that's not that's not me that's not my life how do I get to make everything happen? Because you know, you said I'm a. Once I say it, think it, it's happening. If I know I have that power, why am I cycling myself? Why? Watch me make it work. And so that's. I just hope I keep this same energy for the rest of my life, girl. Because y'all not gonna be able to tell me nothing. Sorry. Oh, I have. I have no <laughs> doubt that you can. Because, like I said, um, the little bit of, even almost, I feel like the kind of a taste of freedom, of it that's my word for 2021 and it's like freedom has been my word for 20 I, it was bubbling inside and manifesting in 2020 mm-hmm. but like living free has been my word and my goal for 2021 freedom has been like once you get free of all the things that start for you or hold you back or false beliefs like I said that you had up until this point that nobody really told you you told yourself Mm. when you let that stuff go girl and it's a it's a journey don't get me wrong I have a therapist a great circle of friends <laughs> I, got, I need things that help me and I know I pray my pastor is amazing um it's 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 emotional it's an emotional journey it's almost like this is gonna sound so corny but it's like I guess what the caterpillar feels when it's like shit. Oh. I know it sounds so corny but it's like I've literally been in situations where I'm like, I shed that. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I shed that. And it was painful and it hurt. But the joy of that feeling of freedom is just like, I'm never going back to anything else. I'm never going back to live in any other way. No, that is, <laughs> I, maybe it's corny, but I agree that whole, because like for, I think, um, and maybe it is something about turning 30. Because I was sure. like, when, when, I, I, business. Mm-hmm. when I got to that point, it was like, I even, I remember for my birthday, I was like, I want the theme to be like butterflies. Cause I feel like I've been going through my, mm-hmm. you know, my caterpillar transformation and in some respects still am, or maybe a different mm-hmm. iteration yeah. of it. Um, but no, it's, I think that's the perfect analogy because for so long, okay, no, you're supposed to do this. You need to do this. Let me, ch-. then it was like, hold up. I'm doing all of these things. And it's, it's it's not working for me it's not working for me if I'm not benefiting up, everybody else joyous, and it's benefiting everybody else that part mm-mm. and so it's I would say my initial one was when I in 2017 I left North Carolina moved to Maryland mm-hmm. and I would say my kind of finding my new I'm gonna do my best life was it, it resulted in me having several different positions mm. <laughs> in a short period of time because it's like hold up no, this is not, this is not an environment that I think is conducive to my peace and the things Mm -hmm. that I want to do or, you know, whatever. So it was, I can't stay here. Let me go look and find something else. And I'm so grateful that God has, you know, allowed, has given me grace to do, to figure this out because it was going from job to job. Like, oh no, I need to do this. Oh no, no. Well, if I do that, it'll be here. If I'm in this environment, that'll do it. And it's like realizing no, it's not the jobs. It's you. It's mm. this, the confines and I appreciate employment. Mm-hmm. Uh, let we me live, not, 
career. Let's not get that twisted. I appreciate it, but it's like, (laughs) right. Like it's realizing, okay, you got to do something. There's other things that you want to do that bring you joy that are, that are fulfilling. And so it was starting to kind of the idea about doing the podcast started in 2017, but I didn't actually do it (laughs) until 2019. Um, um, And then even just things with, with the, as an attorney doing more things on my own um, and, and starting the, or kind of restarting the law firm. So all of that stuff. So I say that to say, I've had a little taste of the freedom and I don't want to go back. And so I know that you have been living it. So I, I think just that alone is another, I guess, motivator of let's keep it going because um, it's, if it's, if it feels like this now, I can only imagine what I it's going to be like. Of it, like. Yeah. What is the rest of it gonna feel like <laughs> and, and that even you know like you said I think therapy is amazing I feel like it should be something that everyone has access to everyone should have access uh-huh. I talk about therapy in every interview I do because especially for people of color like I had just seen myself through my therapist I needed her to mm-hmm. tell me about myself and I have a black therapist I needed her to see me and tell me and get me together because I'm in my head way too much. And she has got me through some of the hardest times of my life, but never sugarcoating, mm-hmm. always listening, giving me another perspective. Therapy is just like, I don't understand why we as a people were ever against it. I mean, I understand why. Right. But it's like, oh, if we all had therapy a little sooner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. That, little that part. We I... got too much trauma to keep it all in and not process it. Oh, the trauma. And that's, it is amazing and it's like yes therapy and Jesus I saw somebody had a shirt on it like yes I matter of fact I think I got one Mm -hmm. something mess in the bottle had something about like therapy and Jesus but it's he created therapists yeah I created therapists exactly like and I ain't gonna get too too churchy so to speak but like Holy Spirit is a counselor like they there were counselors then they didn't call them therapists but it's just like if he created the ability for somebody to do this, why would he not want us to take advantage of it? Especially if it's something that helps. Like we're not talking like, yes, he created things that can naturally serve as drugs too. And people have opinions about that. Okay. But <laughs> I'm talking about like therapists are not there to harm you. They're not there to like and psychoanalyze you, give you drugs. Like you, I'm talking therapy, not like some people do need psychiatry trist who can mm-hmm. describe and things i'm not talking i'm talking about just someone to listen and then offer an opinion because sometimes people get therapy especially I've, I've talked to many colored people who are like i don't need a therapist i have my friends i can just vent to them who told you therapy was about venting it's right. tools now to help you <laughs> actually improve your life you can vent to anybody that's not what therapy is now okay you told me the issues now here are some tools or just another perspective so that you can see how you can actually improve and be your best self so that's sorry that was a little no I I, I hate that argument of like I can just talk to my friends that's not therapy it's not the same it's not the same and your friends know you you need an unbiased perspective to help you move forward and therapy has helped me move my business forward right because sometimes I'll be focused on the wrong thing and I'm talking and she's just like but that's not what you wanted to do you're right sis I hear you and Let me go get back. Okay. It's always <laughs> that one line. It's just that one line, and it's like, oh, I got you. You ain't have to yell at me like that, right? Like, no. I mean, just you could have just maybe wrote it down. You didn't have to. <laughs> you have to scream at no. You don't scream, but it feels like that's the time when they get you with right. that one line. It's like, wow, why are you coming like, from me? It's like, oh, so I just spent this last 20, 30 minutes talking about this, and you basically, but that's irrelevant, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is that aligned with what you said you were going to do? Is that benefiting you? No, I know it's not. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, so therapy is great, especially when you're juggling so many things like I do, right? The kids, the business, the job, like it's, it's a lot sometimes, but I'm I, having a good time and I'm never, there's never nothing more on me than I can bear. And I have to believe that and trust that. So trust was my word uh for 2020 that's my one b that's that one a and one b (laughs) we're on the same page i wrote that down um because um freedom has always been a word but then i was like the other day i was just like no we got to work on our trust 
you got to work on our trust because things are getting overwhelming and the business mm-hmm. is really picking up and I still have so much to organize in my personal life and with the girls. And I'm just like, you got to let go and trust. You got to let go and trust. So yes, got one A and one B. Those are my words. <laughs> it's like, I'm really, you know, even in, in therapy, like, you know, to trust, you got to be vulnerable. You got to be vulnerable to, to really be free. But then there's a trust. It's like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Oh, I can I just go sit? Yes, a lot. Like, let me go sit in the corner for a little while. <laughs> and just, mm, but, um, but yeah, that's great. So speaking of the business, I want to talk a little bit more about it. Um, just... You, t- you talked about kind of the why you got in that um mm-hmm. got into it and what led you to it but in just in terms of why the name mm-hmm. um why you know what type of wines what you do just like about the business yeah. itself now I can talk wine all day girl no. <laughs> so the name was inspired by my oldest daughter she still is waiting for me to cut her a check and, and she made me sign a contract when she was five to say that she helped me name it. I still have this piece of paper. I'm going to frame it one day and said that I pretty much owe her money. She's a little lawyer slash judge in the making. They have, both of them have dreams of being like in the criminal justice system somewhere, somehow. I don't know. But anywho, I always start with that story about how, yeah, one day I just said to heaven, my oldest heaven, I said, help mommy name it because I want them to be a part of every aspect mm-hmm. of my business outside of drinking the wine because they just have no interest and they shouldn't at 9 11, but they like legit are like, we're never drinking that or <laughs> why do you do this but they watch the business side and they'll mm-hmm. sometimes they'll say things or do things I'm like oh you were watching mommy <laughs> so that's why I do the things I do and like literally they've worked events they've designed shirts mm-hmm. they've put labels on things you know they've helped me blind taste I'm studying um for the WSET level three mm-hmm. wine certification yes your girl is a song um so like, they helped me i can't say the word but i was like yeah. i think in america we say somalia i think it's french it's like somalia like i'm not french so i'm gonna say it how i want to say it somalia right you know what i mean i hate when people try to judge american accents but don't judge anyone else's accents like i'm gonna say somalia so anyway so um they'll help me blind taste like they do i keep them a part of it so uh, when the beginning i was like heaven what should i name it and she came up with some crazy name called goodness of roses Okay. And I remember responding to her and being like, girl, I'm not going to name it that, but I do want it to be a, that sounds lovely. I want it to be a really lovely wine. And I saw the spelling immediately because both my kids' middle names are Lee. My grandmother's middle name is Lee. Lee is like a a family name. And Mm -hmm. so that's when I just was like, that's the name. That's the name. So, and I want them to be a part of everything. So that's how I came up with the name. The first wine was a red blend. I'm a red wine drinker. Um, that's my preference. I drink it all, but my preference is red <laughs> wine. Um, and I make all of my wines, all my wines are sourced from grapes in California. They're produced in California. All of that happens. The wine is stored there and it ships direct to consumers. So I'm not in any stores yet. I am working, yes. we actively working on that right now. Say my prayers. Um, but yeah, I, I produce all my wine in California. I have four wines now just sold out of the white but I have a sparkling for the bubble lovers I had a white wine and I just produced my first single varietal which means one type of grape which is a Pinot Noir that's one of my favorite varietals other than that I tend to do custom blends just so I can put my winemaker skills in there so I bought the California at least twice a year to sit to blend meaning I made like my first wine is a Syrah blend with Merlot um, Petite Syrah, Viognier, Zinfandel so that's what I mean by blending. So mm-hmm. that's why sometimes when you see a wine, it doesn't always have a Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc on it. It'll just yeah. say like the producer or it'll just say blend. Because a lot of wine, especially fine wines, are blended to get you the perfect balanced wine. Oh. Um, yeah. So like I said, I can turn into a wine geek, but I'm going to try not to. <laughs> hey, <it's>, um, <laughs> I think it, it's great because I know I used to say I'm not an, an adult wine. I'm not an adult wine drinker. Like when I first started, I, I realized my palate has definitely matured because it was a time yeah, that palate. matter of fact, it was your wine that um, had me like, oh, wait, I, I do like red. I can't that like red wine. Thank you. See, let me tell you something, baby. <laughs> My favorite clients are baby clients, baby drinkers, right? The people who are like, I only drink sweet wine slash Moscato 
and um, I don't like wine because it's too bitter. And they use language like that, right? And I love it because I'm like, mm -hmm -hmm. but have you tried mine? And most of the time, people are intimidated of trying because they don't even know where to start. There are thousands of different wines in the world, thousands, 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 right? And so, yes, dry wine can give a bitter, a bitter um, taste, but there are so many different ones. You can train your palate to like certain dry wine. There are certain varietals that you may like. You may like the fruit forwardness of a Pinot Noir or someone like me, I tend to do love Syrahs, which are a little bolder and deeper and you know, higher in tannin, which is that drying effect in your mouth. That's what makes it all bitter, right? Then what are you eating with your wine? What are you pairing it with? What you eat with what you drink affects the experience a lot. So that's why people do wine and food pairings, right? So, and, and I just love baby drinkers because I just get the opportunity to, to teach and then convert. Cause next thing you know, now you're drinking my wine because I told you this wine is made different, honey. <laughs> All right. You can drink juice any day of the week. Okay. <laughs> you can get that at the grocery store. You right. You can juice over here, but no, I don't, I try not to shame. Wine shaming is very bad, but I just get so excited when I'm just like, just try, be open-minded. My thing is if you do still only end up liking sweet wine after you try mine, or you may find other brands you like, that's totally fine. Wine is just so personal to, to people, right? And to me, so if my thing is I want to teach you how to be confident in speaking about the wines you like. So I'm going to help you learn why you only like sweet wine because you don't like the taste of tannins or acid or all of the things that make a dry wine. You like the flavors of peach and grape, which tends to come <laughs> in some sweet wines, right? Like those are the things I want to help people because a lot of times it's not that people don't like wine, they're more afraid to speak about it. They don't want to seem like they don't know. And it's like, you don't know if you've never been exposed. Our people weren't exposed to this world like that, right? right. Enough to be like, to understand the whole intricate, all of the intricacies that come with wine. It's a very intricate world, but it's also not that deep. Like it's just great. And I want my people to know that like, we don't have to make it deeper than what it is. We can just mm -hmm. have fun with it. Just have fun with it. So that's what I hope my brand represents for people It's like, fun wine, unintimidating space where you get to learn and explore and find what you like and be confident in what you like. That is I'm it. sure you'll like my wine. I, I believe it. Like I said, because I I, re I don't remember what event it was, but it was like, wait, I don't do I don't do red wine. I don't think I like it. And they were like, it was probably, just try it. And I was like, okay. And I was like, oh, wait, okay. And then I, I had a... Bigger. I, I was like, wait, I... Yes. And it's, but it's to the point now where this, you know, I feel like Moscato is the, uh, or was the gateway wine. Or gateway. That gateway white wine. Zendel, like I don't turn my nose down at it. It's yeah. just not fun for me anymore. It's just not fun. And, and that's where I say like, oh, wait, my palate has matured because I drink and it's like, this is juice with some bubbles in it. And a lot of sugar um but it's like okay that's cool and I doubt it was a time when that was what I I drank but now I have I would say I'm a bit more open to exploring the reds and the drier wines um, but um but yeah no it's it's so many things like you said that we weren't exposed to and then like I said, it, for me, it was in college or you, you know someone who, who has some wine and you drink it. Oh, initially it was, oh, wait, what, what can we afford? Mm -hmm. Let me go get this six, seven dollar bottle. Listen, I was drinking a box wine in college. Yes. So I then it's a throwback party or something. We only drink Zinfandel, White Zin and like Moscato and drink out of a box. That'd be a fun party. Like let your hair down and have some fun. Yes. Then we'll that drink my premium fine quality wines. Yes. No, matter of fact, that would be, I would say, because, you know, everybody's always talking about like a 90s party. First of all, that would be like, I feel like that's the, new, that's the new throwback party. Just. But, what was your first drink? What was your first wine? Like, remember Majorska Vodka and like Smirnoff? Mm. And like, <laughs> no. I can't drink now. Right. I'm like, like mm. I can't. I can't. And if somebody. When people I'll mention it, I'll be like, it was in fine wine. <laughs> yeah, when people mention that stuff now, I'll be like, mm, stomach uh, hurts. It's a thought. It hurt. Yeah. But you couldn't afford nothing now. We didn't know no better. That was college. So, but yeah, like, I love when people are just open minded and willing to try and willing to listen to me talk <laughs> about wine. So, 
Well, that is great. And I'm happy to hear you talk about it. Cause like I said, I learned a lot just in a little bit that you shared, even in the blends part, because like there've been times where, um, you know, I'm looking like, okay, I want to try something new. Mm-hmm. What is it? And I know the name, you know, I know the, the Merlot, the Pinot Noir and like Pinot Grigio. So it's like, I know those names, but then I'm like, uh, I don't know. And I had a room. I had a roommate who she loves red wines and so kind of through her (laughs) learned a little bit more about the different types and it's like okay because she thinks the wines that I like are juice (laughs) she's like "Mm, that juice that you drink that ain't nothing but juice so even in that of just kind of us like she'd get something I'd like oh hey try this to like kind of figure out okay ones that we both like um she's still mine tend to still be more on the juice side for her but like I said I I'm enjoying that it's like that's just another I would say phase of adulting or life and just learning and being open to that Mm -hmm. um and so I am like I said I'm excited when I see it and anytime anytime I see something about a wine expo or wine I'll be like do you know about lovely wine? I appreciate that. Do I love please? how my people always throw my name like, and stuff. I love it. Thank like, you. I don't know if you know about this one, but um, <laughs> I appreciate it so much. But um, but speaking of which, so how do people? I know you said it's shipped directly to consumers. Mm-hmm. So how do we get some of the lovely yes. wine? So you go to my website, lovelywine.com, L-O-V-E-L-E-E wine and you order if I ship to 34 states so if I'm not shipping to your state you'll be able to see that but like I said I'm working on national distribution right now so stay tuned um you can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook at lovely wine I um am very active socially keeping people up to date on what we're offering my cat is disrespectful she opened it it's not a ghost <laughs> My cat has been trying to get into that door. (laughs) So rude when I'm on lives and like recording. Anywho. Um, And what else? My website, lovelywine.com. Thank you for that. Email me if you have questions or you want to book a tasting. You can also do that on my my website, but you want to email me, amira at lovelywine.com. I'm super duper responsive. But yeah, my request is follow me, tell your friends about me, and of course, order some wine. Order the wine. I got some stuff in my cart right now for my lovely wine. Because I was I was like, okay, I'm a, I'm going to try the red because I had the sample and I like it. And then when you had the rosé, I was like, mm, that's become my new. You like rose? You like bubbles? Yeah, I don't, I don't, like, I'm still like, when, when, where, how did this start? But it's like. I did the bubbles for y'all. I'm not the biggest bubbles fan. I like my still dry wine, but the people love, y'all love y'all bubbles. Well, see, I I actually prefer the, I mean, I do the bubbles with Ruth Rosé, but I like the, the, I guess, non-sparkling rosé. Yep, but I'll be still. So you would say you like still, you like still rosé. Still rosés. So I always equip you, girl. Thank you. I like my, I like still rosés, but I don't really care for sparkling wine. (laughs) <laughs> sound educated no. but yeah so that is like I'll do because I've noticed there's more of the sparkling mm-hmm. rosés I'm like this is okay but I also like mm-hmm. so now I know still rosé yeah. but I'm still gonna try the sparkling rosé yeah. um, it is really really delicious like if I don't make it I'm gonna make it good so it's and like I said I I trust because I'm like wait it's a mirror so I know it's yeah. going to be thorough always um, always so that I it's a part of me is like mm, keep let's keep going because I want to learn more about the wine but I also want to be respectful of time <laughs> um but but thank you so much um for for sitting or I say sitting down with me um <laughs> thank you for new, the new way yes. we sat down together we did yes that's, um, not, that's speak, the new language <laughs> right speaking of which I think I saw so you I know before you were doing a lot of events and, and tastings, but I think I saw on the website that you're also doing virtual. Yep. If so you that's... want virtual, you can do that as well. I've done some for a few companies too. So if you want to do a virtual, there's definitely that option. But I like to be outside. Catch me outside. And you want me in person, <laughs> I will be there. I wear my mask, but I love to interact socially. So that is not off the table. Um, yes, yeah, so, but I do both. Okay, now do you travel for these tastings? Or? I do. I tend 
to try to not go past Philly. <laughs> New York, New Jersey, Philly. Okay. Um, but it depends on who you are. We can talk about it. Um, and I'm, I'm in DC a lot. I have friends there too. So yes, I do. So just talk to me about it. And if it's something I can do, I don't mind. And if it's something that's worth both of our time and effort and your money, then <laughs> we could always work it out. Yes. Because she's not doing this for free. I know. I have to, that's something I have to learn too. My time, my knowledge is valuable. I was doing a lot of stuff at first for like free and thinking I wasn't worthy. That's a false belief. Who told me that? I was going to say, that's a whole other you know, word and conversation. I, as hard as I work and the amount of studying I do, and the amount of time I dedicate, I'm worth it. I'm worth it. It is okay if you can't spend, listen, we all get to choose who we spend our money, but that doesn't mean I have to lessen my brand or my value to accommodate other people. I'm just, my brand just may not be for you and that's okay. I'm learning that I don't have to change my, I'm worth it. I'm worth it. And the more I stick to that, the more I'll, I'll get what I'm worth. So know your worth people. Yes, that Double right. The price. Double that, the price. Is a, <laughs> that is a word. That is a word. Um, but like I said, thank you so much. Um, make sure you all go to lovelywine.com. Put your orders in. Um, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Be open minded. Yes. This is not your everyday regular degular wine. Um, it's not regular about me, sorry. Exactly. So right. you will have an experience, not yes. just the beverage. Yes. Um, so thank you so much, like I said, for just for being you and for sharing. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, I think you mentioned this in the beginning when you're talking about what you're grateful for, just it's a process and mm -hmm. that remembering that everything works together for your good, which is legitimately where the name of this podcast came from, because it's just like, oh god okay uh what about this well, it does not and so I always say as a reminder to myself and to to you and those listening even though it does it may not look like it or feel like it mm -hmm. it is all working together for our good mm -hmm. and it is a journey it's a process mm -hmm. so make sure that you are enjoying it Mm -hmm. so thank you amira thank you all for listening until next time thanks for having me